open up to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy and chapter number 6. Church, we ought to find it out of the Bible. Yeah. Amen. I believe if it's not in the Bible, hey, 
We shouldn't be doing it. Or if it's preached against in the Bible or taught against in the Bible, we shouldn't be doing it. Amen. Amen. That's right. My concern is that we as a church don't err from the faith. It bothers me when people reject Christ. It bothers me when men that I once looked up to as men of God go away from the truth of God's Word. It bothers me when churches start drifting away. But what would bother me the most is that this church yes, sir. Yeah. drifted yes. away. Amen. 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 The only way that this church will drift away is if the pulpit drifts away. Come right. on, preacher! Come on. In my absence, right. I'm counting on you Amen. to hold the truth, right. to hold the anchor, to hold the rope, if you will. I think we just need to stay the same. Listen, does the Bible change? No. no. The Bible hasn't changed since it was written. God's Word is, God said in the Old Testament, He would preserve His Word from this generation forever. When He said He would preserve it, that means everything is going to stay the same. Amen. Let me ask you something. If God's Word never changes... Why should we change? Amen. That's right. Amen. Why should we change? Thinking about Aaron from the faith. In this two verses, Timothy is admonished to keep that which has been given unto him. To hold on to it. I mean, to think of this book as the most precious thing that you own. Amen. 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 That's right. That's the way we ought to look at it. Paul says, don't get away from the things of, uh, of the Word. Don't get away from the things that I've taught you. Don't err from the faith. See, in verse number 20, he talks about Timothy. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. Now, profane here means heathen. Preaching and saying things that are contrary to the Word of God. In the world that we live in, I've heard preachers get on TV and, and everything else that is enough to make a maggot puke. <laughs> they, get on the, they get on there and say, well, listen, everybody's going to go to heaven eventually. Mm -hmm. I've heard people get on there and say, well, they, they, they have their way to get to God and, and I have my way to get to God and it will all work out in the end. Listen, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's right. Amen. Amen. People get on there and dispute between different ideologies. And if you will, I hate to say it called theologies because their theology means that it's based on God. And what they're talking about isn't based on God. That's right. That's right. Good preaching, preacher. Provane babblings. Babbling means to utter a meaningless confusion. Words or sounds. They may sound good to man, but in light of eternity, in light of God's Word, they are meaningless. Babblings. Listen. I heard for years, Dr. Smith and Dr. Belcher say, keeping the main thing 
the main thing. They're talking about soul winning. Being able to lead people to Christ. They're talking about what the Bible, what Christ in the Great Commission gave to the church to do. To every individual church that were to be a soul winner. Reaching people for Christ. <clears throat> Too many people today get into political things. Too many preachers get on soapboxes preaching about political issues. Listen, if the Bible is preached, and you know what the Bible says, you'll know how to vote. Amen. 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 Preachers don't need to get up and preach on that thing. No, good preaching, preacher. You preach the Bible, you preach the truth, and that all those things will take care of themselves. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Then you have Pharisaical preaching. Not just political preaching, but Pharisaical. Listen. I'm concerned. Because if you remember in the New Testament, in the Gospels, Christ warned the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees, right? Which is hypocrisy. Listen, we need to get back as a church, not get back, we need to study in a place where I preach what I live. Too many places in the world are getting away from it, and listen, they, there's a great desire for people, listen, they, they want to go to church and they want to have their ears fluffed. They want to be told how good a person you are. Listen, I, when I go hear someone preach, I don't want to be told how good a person I am. I want someone to rip me over the coals. Amen. Come on, preacher. Come on. Help me realize, I, hey, I'm still a sinner. I might be saved, but I'm a sinner. Saved by grace. Amen. 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 Remember, the Bible still says, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. In other words, the truth of God's Word. I, I'm sick of seeing so many things in the world where people get up and they preach and preach and they go out and do something else. I'm sick, listen, I'm sick of seeing Christians come in on Sunday and say, well, listen, this, I, I'm this way and they act all good and everything, but the rest of the week you see a different person. Yeah. 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 A Christian is a Christian 24-7. Amen. 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 They're no different on Tuesday night as Sunday or Saturday night or Friday night as Sunday. We see too much of that going on in the world today. They're erring from the faith. That's what Paul is saying. Which some professing have erred. They've got away from the truth of God's Word. You say, preacher, why are you preaching this? Because I'm getting ready to leave. I'm going to set the foundation before I go. <laughs> what I expect when I get back. I expect there still to be truth. I expect to still see the Bible being preached. I still expect to see you living for God. Amen. Amen. There is pleasing preaching that's in the world today. The Bible says that uh, in the last days <coughs> they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And isn't that what we live in today? Mm -hmm. yeah. People who go around and, and man, I, I, I've been in churches where the, pe the preacher was afraid to preach because someone 
we get mad. I've said it before, the day someone tells me what I am and will not preach is the last day you'll see me around. There's only one person who tells me what to preach, that's Christ. Amen. Amen. Good, good preaching. Good. But so many preachers, so many churches, they don't want to hear what thus saith the Lord. What we was talking about in Sunday school, about... Uh, not letting fornication be named among you in 1 Corinthians. Listen, some places you get up and preach like that, they'll run a preacher off because half the congregation is doing it. That should not be. There's dangers in erring from the faith. You remove the hand of God from you and your church. You remove the blessings of God. And you know, a lot of people don't even realize that's happened. And that's the sad commentary. They err from the faith, they've got away from God, and they don't even realize that He's not there. There's dangers in erring from the faith. And then this other thing. Have you ever read this verse um, and wondered why God chose to phrase this verse this way in, in verse number 20 of our text? He says, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions to science falsely so-called. Why does he say science falsely so called? Because the word science is supposed to mean literally something that can be physically proven. Science is not uh, a theology, if you will. A, thought, a theology is something you believe. Like or a theory is something you believe. A theory is not something you can prove. When you look at what the Bible says here, it's talking about theories. And listen, over the last hundred years, we've had a lot of theories floating around. Have you ever wondered why it's called the theory of evolution? That's because you can't prove it. Amen. Yeah. You cannot back it up scientifically. Mm -hmm. It is a theory. The Bible clearly teaches that God created the heaven and earth in six days and He rested on the seventh. It was not six periods of time. And some people want to try to believe it. That's the reason the Bible says this is the first day. Do not say it is a first day. It is the first day the second day, Amen. the third day, the fourth day, Amen. the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. people ignore little words in the Bible. The word the <coughs> is what we call a definite article. It means it points to something as a definite, not a vague. Like this is the wife of Pastor Smith. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's not a wife. Amen. Amen. It is the wife. And so, over these past 100 plus years, 150 years, science, so called, science so called, as the Bible says it, has really begun to creep into the church and cause people to doubt the Word of God. That's right. That's why the Bible calls it science falsely so called. And because it causes people to or doubt the Word of God, then they start bringing into question things that the Bible teaches. That's right. And now we've got a, a form of religion where the Bible says, well, 
Have you ever heard this phrase before? Well, that was 2,000 years ago. Yeah. If the Lord never changes, why do we think He changes today? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Good preaching, preacher. Listen, I, I realize this is a little bit different message than I normally preach. I normally have a whole lot more verses in this. Mm. But God has really impressed upon my heart this morning that I want to emphasize us staying true to the things of God. Amen. Amen. And if we know what our adversary is trying to use to get us off in the right direction, mm -hmm. we can see the warning signs before it happens. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we can avoid erring from the faith. Right. Listen, this thing is too big of a deal. We've got little ones. We've got young ones here, here in the nursery. That I'm going to see grow up if the Lord tears is coming in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Not philosophies of men. In the Bible. Paul also tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, or 1 and verse 4, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. Listen, we're to encourage one another to go on. We're to edify one another. To stand tall and stand true to God's Word. Amen. When we get out and, and begin to do other things, I mean, I, I don't know about you, I grew up, when I was growing up in church, I heard a lot of life stories <clears throat> that had nothing to do with the Bible. That is the danger of erring from the faith. Paul was very concerned with Timothy. Remember, Timothy was his young preacher boy. He's someone that grew up under Paul's ministry. He's someone that Paul had great influence over. Listen. Can you imagine sitting and listening to the Apostle Paul preach? I have no idea what that would be like. We're talking someone God used to write the bulk of the New Testament. And if Paul was concerned about Timothy, someone who grew up under the greatest preacher ever besides the Lord Jesus Christ, if he was still concerned about this one erring from the faith, how much more should we be concerned about erring from the faith? Amen. Amen. You see, I, I still believe in sanctification. That the Bible teaches a child of God should be sanctified or being sanctified as it teaches. It's a continual process. You never get done. You never arrive. I like what Maria Ann said. Uh, her sister got saved here recently. Who used to be someone who thought she was teaching truth and stuff and, and everything. Thought she knew the Bible. She started reading and she, first time in her life, she started reading from Genesis and going forward. And she found out that she didn't really know a whole lot about the Bible. <coughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Now that's a danger in the world we live in. The danger is we get to looking at this person or this person or this person and thinking, hey, I'm doing pretty good compared to them. Mm -hmm. That's where you err from the faith. Right. You see, who we should be looking at is the cross of Calvary in Christ. Amen. 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 If we keep our eyes on Christ, we'll realize, I never arrived yet. 
I'm not there. There's things I need to straighten up. There's things I need to do in my life. I'm talking about as a child of God. So many people are under the misconception you get saved, that's the end of it. No, that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's just the beginning. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, preacher, you're good. You're good, preacher. Ooh. Man, there is a... I, I love to think of Lee Robertson. Mm -hmm. I can remember being there when a conversation was going on. He was 96 years old. Still preaching. Had been preaching for almost 80 years. Reading through the Bible three times a year. And he was asked, Brother Robertson, if you had it to do over again, what would you do differently? He said, I would be in my Bible more. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. He didn't say that because he was a preacher. He just knew the importance of being in the Word of God. Amen. That's why the Bible say, says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. How can you know what's false unless you're in the Word of God? Amen. 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 If you're not in it, you can be bottled by anything going down the road and think, hey, that sounds good. It must be right. I can't count how many people I've sat down who were willing to look at the Word of God and what it says and say, wow, I never know who said that. I never knew. I've heard this say. Well, why are they teaching that then? Listen, if it's not in the book, it's not for me. If the Bible's again, you know, again, it's one of them southern hillbilly words, again. If the Bible's again, I'm again. Sergeant York, he's again in things. Listen, what we need is a revival of truth. Amen. Amen. We need a revival of what the Bible says. That's right. Amen. See, so many people get up, and a big fallacy today is preaching salvation without repentance. Salvation without repentance will get you professions without possessions. And I don't mean things. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Christ said, lest ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. John the Baptist preached, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Christ preached, repent. Paul preached, repent. Peter preached, repent. Amen. 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 We've got a lot of people who pray prayers with no repentance. I think that's where the heart comes in. <clears throat> you see, it's not about a prayer. It's about a person. If it was about a prayer, I'd about saved in 1976 when I prayed a prayer. But I was scared about going to hell. And I didn't pray a prayer because I, was, I had sinned against the Holy God. I prayed a prayer because I didn't want to go to hell. For 21 years of my life, I thought I was saved because I prayed a prayer. As I've said many times before, I was a trustee in a church. I taught 20s and 30s couples Sunday school class. 
I work with the teens and with the youth. And if I would have died during that period, I would have went to a devil's hell. See, Hebrews chapter 12 teaches that a child of God is going to have chastening in their life. Chastening means correcting, not guilt. A lot of people confuse guilt with chastening. Guilt, you can get past. Chastening, you won't get past. Amen. Big difference. And for 21 years of my life, I thought I was saved. If you would have asked me during that time, I'd have said, yeah, I've been saved since I was there. I'd have told you that. Because I always heard, you pray a prayer, you're saved. But there was no chastening of the Lord in my life. <clears throat> in Hebrews chapter 12, listen, if, you, if you've never heard this before, you ought to mark this down and go back and read it for yourself. In Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says that all are partakers of chastening, all his children. And he says, if there is no chastening whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. According to the Bible, then, what it says is, if you have no chastening, if you could continue in sin in your life, and there's no chastening of God in your life, then you don't know who your father is. That is what it says. For 21 years of my life, I went through my life thinking I was saved because I prayed a prayer. But listen, I still listened to rock. I still listened to country and didn't think a thing about it. It didn't bother me. I could watch junk on TV and it didn't bother me. I could tell dirty jokes and it didn't bother me. By the way, a Christian should never let a dirty joke come out of their mouth or insinuations right. towards the opposite sex. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on, preacher. Come on. It should never happen. If it does, you ought to be getting whipped by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Like you never Amen. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. I could do those things that didn't bother me. I, I, I've told you, and it blows some of you away. But when I was a trustee and everything in a church, we used to listen to ACDC in church with the youth. And the people thought it was fine. I was not saved. When I got saved, when I got on my face before God and got born again, listen, Things changed. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 became real in my life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. 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 There's a danger of getting away from the truth of God's Word. Without repentance, there's no remission. What the New Testament says. means no remission for sins. You see, if I were to ask you today, don't answer it. I don't want you to tell on yourself. Just keep this in your heart. Don't get bug-eyed or anything like that. That's a, that's a telltale of your answer too. But if I were to ask you today, do you deserve hell? Don't answer me. Don't nod your head. I don't want you telling them on yourself. Do you deserve hell? Every person here should say yes. If you don't, you've got a problem. Because you're comparing yourself to somebody else rather than Christ. Right. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. We deserve hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you escape hell, it's by the grace of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
You can't do enough to be good enough to get to heaven. If you could, Christ died in vain. That's right. That's why the Bible says, lest anyone should boast. Any man should boast. Because if you could earn your way to heaven, you would get there and you would go, I made it. I did enough. You can't do enough. Amen? Amen. This thing of danger, of error from the faith, getting away from the things that the Bible teaches and says, it's a danger in the world that we live in. It's a danger we have to be aware of as children of God. It's a danger we have to watch out for. Why? Because in the last days, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. And that's what we're seeing today. Amen. This, it makes me sick, some of these people that I've seen get on TV and whimper and whine around stuff. Rod Parsley got on TV and they, they asked him on an interview about salvation. And he was so wishy washy I mean, you talk about a spineless person. That's what you have to be wary of. Listen. When I was sitting where you was at, I wanted someone to get up and just thunder forth the Word of God with no apologies. Amen. 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 The Bible, Christ, do you think He used a feather around the Pharisees? <laughs> no. Why do you want a preacher that's going to do the same? That's right. That's right. No, He was right. John, John the Baptist didn't look at Herod and say, oh, you're just a fornicator and adulterer. No, I think he thundered it out. Amen. I think that's probably the reason they hung him, according to the Bible, or cut his head off. Mm -hmm. He didn't cut any bones. Go back and study the Old Testament prophets. The God, the ones that God used You'll find that they was pretty straightforward with the word. Amen. I can remember last year when Sarah was reading through Jeremiah. She it was just it, we've read it so many times, but it always seems to amaze us when we read it how bold Jeremiah was. Amen. <laughs> All the prophets were. They just thundered forth the word of God. Why do we want anything less for ourselves? That's right. That's right. Listen. Why do you think Paul told the church in Boston that we're to mortify the deeds of the flesh? That there's things that we're to put off. Why did he warn us that the flesh warreth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh? If it's not something we need to eat to. You think about this. Paul was concerned for his son in the faith. He was concerned that he would err from the faith. That he would get mixed up in the wrong thing. And he gave him a warning. You see, I want to pattern myself after Paul. Christ, yes. But I'm talking about as a preacher. You know, when Paul caught Peter doing things he shouldn't, he confronted him to the face, the Bible says. Paul was not afraid to take a stand. In the world we live in, it's not popular to stand for Christ. 
It's not pop. Listen, it's not popular to witness to people. Oh, you're. I, I, I've heard this here. Oh, you're judging them because you, you you're asking them whether they're saved or not. Praise the Lord, somebody better. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What if I die and go to hell because you're too afraid to say something? We have to stand for truth. Amen. 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 In the last days, as we see the day of Christ approaching, as we see coming to the point where the trumpet's going to sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. But until those days, there's a danger of error. Yeah. Amen. Let's stand guard. Let's stand for truth. Let's stand for what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen. Let God take care of everything else. That's right. You. You individually. Stand for truth. Amen. Amen. That's right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the day. I thank you for the day. Truth, I thank you for the word. I pray, dear Lord, as we come to this time of invitation, that decisions would be made to stand for you. That decisions would be made that we could just hold fast to the word. I pray, dear Lord, that you would help each and every one of us to make those decisions. To be the Christian you want us to be. I pray for anyone here that's not saved you this morning, dear Lord, that today that they would get that thing right with you. Every head bowed and every eye.